Oh, look at that, viewers. It's absolutely beautiful. Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Recently our friend CH has added to our sim DTS Chinese Ballistic DF-21 missiles. We did this attack where we used the DF-21 against a flotilla of American Tyco cruisers. It was a good battle. But you guys requested, okay, fire those missiles now at Guam. Let's see if Guam can defend itself with its Patriot and importantly with its FAD defense system. The first thing to say is that the DF-21 ballistic missile does not have the range to get to Guam. Guam is nearly 2,000 miles away and the missile can only go about 1,500 miles. So we're using the next missile up that has the range to get to Guam, the Dongfeng or DF-26. It has a range of about 3,000 miles. It's the earliest model of DF that can reach Guam. So welcome to Chinese Dongfeng 26 Strike versus Thad and Patriot Defense at Guam. Guam, 1 7th scale. Why 1 7th scale? Well, it's because we can only model so many missiles in the air at once. So 1 7th scale seems good. First, the DF-26 attack. We do not have China modeled nearly 2,000 miles away. So instead, we're firing from just over 200 miles away. It's not going to make a vast amount of difference in our sim. On some random Marianas Island 200 miles to the north, we have 30 DF-26 launchers. We've used CH's DF-21 actual 3D model for them, but they will be DF-26s otherwise. In terms of the defense, if we can find Guam, there we go. We want to make this as scientific as possible. So to make the result quantifiable, we've got 30 targets on Anderson Air Force Base. They are just simple APCs. 30 missiles against 30 targets. In terms of defending from ballistic missiles, the US uses a layered system. Various types of SAMs with different altitude capabilities all layered together. In terms of Guam, it's going to be THAAD for the high altitude defense and Patriot for the low altitude defense. And we've got a Patriot battery here and a THAAD battery here. In reality, open source tells us that there are seven THAAD batteries on the island of Guam. One seventh scale, we have one battery. We couldn't actually find how many Patriot batteries are on the island, so we're going to assume seven as well, scaled down to one battery today. In terms of the 3D models, which aren't too important today, uh, we're using CH's Pack 3 Patriot, the MSE model. Interestingly, we're not using Pack 2 launchers today, and that's presumably because Pack 2 is not suited for anti ballistic work, which is mainly done at high altitude, where I suspect Pack 2 aerodynamic control would not be sufficient for the intercepts, but I would like your feedback on that. The Patriot Pack 3 is designed for fine control at high altitudes, and of course, so is FAD. We do not have the FAD 3D models yet, so we're just using. Uh, pack 3 Patriot for the actual visual aspects, but again, they are modeled as THAAD. Patriot Pack 3 is going to be used up to about 100,000 feet. THAAD is then going to cover between about 100,000 up to 400,000 feet altitude. Now, it's important to say that real ballistic missiles will go very high, probably millions of feet up. Today, we are restricted. We can only send them up to about 300,000 feet, but they'll be going approximately the correct speeds and should be fairly accurate. We'll run three sims today. First, just the Chinese missiles on their own as a control test. Then we'll run it with just Patriot defending and then we'll run it with just FAD defending. So quickly, let's make some predictions. Obviously, all 30 are going to get through without any defense. I need some predictions. How many will Patriot be able to intercept? And then how many will Patriot and FAD be able to intercept? Uh, I've got absolutely no reference of guessing, but your thoughts? Mm, Patriot maybe five and Patriot and Dad, all of them? I'm going to guess Patriot three on its own it's not going to be that useful and thad i'm going to guess 20 with patriot and some leakage anyone else i mean this is exactly what it's designed for so it should be pretty effective but i'm not sure it's going to nail 100 percent of everything that comes through the combined system both that and pack roger in case i didn't mention we're firing 30 missiles because according to latest intel china has 200 df-26s so this is an absolute full-scale attack. They are launching all of the DF-26s. Right, guys, let's run Sim 1. I'm going to turn both SAMs off. All right, viewers, first test, control test, just to make sure the missiles work and see how they fly. Lift off. 
two-piece missile re-entry vehicle on the front modelled visually as DF-21. Pretty impressive. Can you imagine the scary thought if you didn't know those were going to launch, all of a sudden you see uh -huh. all those things take off, right. how just terrifying that would be? It would be like a bunch of space shuttle launches. Well, that's pretty yeah. impressive, viewers. 163,000 feet. 200,000 feet. Right, let's see what we can see. So that is... What is that? Is that Saipan? I think that's Saipan. So we can see rotor. Where's rotor? No, it's not in renderable distance yet. Let's check on the map. Yep, just passing Saipan now. Very quiet up here. Uh, 250,000 feet, and now we're starting to defence. Now, again, in reality, they will be much higher. Hundreds of miles up. We're about... I don't know what we are. About 70, 80 miles. Oh, right, back into orbit. Uh, sorry, back into atmosphere. Can we see any islands? There is rotor, I'm guessing. Yep, that's rotor. There's Guam. And we can speed up because obviously nothing's going to fire. Those high value targets. Mm hmm. And as you can see on the scoreboard, all 30 taken out. Right, we're just going to add in the Patriot Pack 3 MSC site now. So pip, pip, wrecked. Fire! Right, we're going to speed this up because the Patriots won't fire until they are about 100,000 feet down. Which is now. First missile's out. Let's just pause for the science viewers at a lateral range of 30 miles at a altitude of 88 or a little bit more, about 100,000 feet. That is the Pack 3 interceptor, which is, of course, designed to guide via this very clever control system in no atmosphere. And pause. So here's the problem with this, just this. They can't intercept high enough. They don't get enough time because... Not all of those interceptors will intercept. They need time to refire. Which they're not going to get with this thing moving. Sorry, let's just check speeds very quickly. This is moving at 4,500 knots. I don't know what that is. I suggest it's about Mark 7 or Mark 8. And already you can see the first one's got through. Unlock. Don't you just love explosion-based science, viewers? Ballistic, hypersonic, explosion-based science. Wow, one of them just hit the friggin' launcher. Twenty-two missiles got through. Twenty-three interceptors were fired, but they only intercepted eight. Why is that? Well, I don't know. You'd have to go and study each one, the physics of each one, but they just weren't good enough at doing the intercept. Guys, let's go and add Thad. There. Turn on. This time, we're going to be able to start intercepting them at their full altitude of 250,000 feet, as is modelled uh, firing them at this range. At a lateral range of, I think it's about 70 miles. So we're going to get lots more time to intercept with probably what are better interceptor missiles. Probably get in trouble for saying that. Don't want to upset the Patriot boys. Right, off we go. 250,000 feet. Where's Thad? Where's Thad? Stop. And we have nine Thad interceptors out at a range of 70 miles. What a freaking guess. Yep, 70 miles lateral. That's probably where they're going to be limited to today. In reality, these would come down steeper than we're modelling here. But otherwise, it's not going to make a huge amount of difference. So, off we go. Being intercepted at over 200,000 feet. Can we actually see anything? 16 fad out. And wow, look at that. Look at them. Into space they go. Oh, look, one terminated. Right. Here come the rest of them. 24. Wow, sorry, so much happening. At the moment, uh, Thad fired 24 interceptors, although some of them appear to have just uh, destroyed themselves for unknown reason. And five Patriots have fired because we're now approaching 100,000 feet. You can see all these stats at the bottom, by the way, viewers. Speed and altitude. Right, let's see how we do. 
I've got no way of seeing how many missiles have been shot down. Let's just have a pause. As you can see, we're all mixed in together now. Some have been shot down, but I don't know how many. Lock into this guy and Rigo. 45 interceptors fired, 16 pack 330 fired. Wow, we. Oh, look at that, viewers. It's absolutely beautiful. No idea how many have got through, but it looks like some are going to get through. We're now on to Terminal Patriot Defense. Five. Five got through. Not bad. So, whoever guessed 25, I don't know, one of you guessed 25 would be intercepted, was spot on. So, as best we can simulate it, that's 25. You know what? Let's just run it again, viewers. Now, the way DCS works is there's quite a few randomizers in there. Let's run it again and see if we get the same result and see how linearly that's modeled. We'll just run it through super fast this time. 200,000 feet. Fads are out. Pack three's out. Ooh. Oh. Three got through. Four got through. Right, so this time four got through. So it looks like if we keep running it, we're going to bounce probably between three and six because of the randomizers in there. But generally speaking, it looks like with FAD and Patriot layered defense firing between essentially zero and 400,000 feet, we're taking out about 90%, which to be honest is pretty impressive. I mean, how realistic is that? We'll never know, obviously. And we have certain limits in DCS, so we can only be so realistic with this type of technology. But I would say that's probably as close as we're going to get. So that is our simulation of 1 7th scale, 200 or so DF-26s being fired, 7 batteries of THAAD and 7 batteries of Patriot Pat 3. My guys, thoughts and feedback. Uh, it's going to be a scary day when that happens. But uh, yeah, there's also quite a few limitations with DCS. So. Yeah. Uh, 70 interceptor missiles were fired, I see, for only... Uh, how many kills? 26 kills. So that is quite a low PK and that's probably the most important thing, viewers. In reality, the real systems would be able to manage which interceptor missiles were fired at which targets better than DCS. In DCS, it's kind of a free-for-all because it's not really designed for this kind of thing. So missiles will be fired at random ICBMs, where in real life it will be much more cleverly managed which interceptors went for which missile. As well as that, it's possible that interceptors, once they had lost their track for some reason, could be vectored onto a new ICBM, which would that's never going to be possible in DCS, or I doubt it. So there are limiting factors, but I still think it's pretty decent. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, and bye-bye.